Good morning and welcome to the press conference for the 8th Berlin Science Week. This event means that uh, the Science Week is just around the corner and today we would like to take the opportunity to tell, us a bit, uh, tell you a bit more about the program and the highlights. First of all, we would like to extend a big thank you to our host today, which is Holzmark 25, the cultural center and our new partner and a little bit more about this will come in a second. So I would like to start with uh, introducing our panelists. Um, I will start with Ina Chibora, Senator for Higher Education and Research, Health and Long-Term Care. Uh, Jürgen Mlunek, Coordinator, Berlin Science Week and Chairman of the Falling Walls Foundation. Luisa Bengtsen, Head of Berlin Science Week. Pier Giorgio Alotto, a science Scientific Attaché of the Italian um, Embassy in Berlin. Martin Rennert, who is the chairman of the Einstein Foundation Berlin, and Roman Engel-Herbert, director of Paul Trude Institute for Solid State Electronics. Uh, just a couple of words about uh, the agenda today. So we will start with the panelists' speeches in a second. We'll also like to say hello and welcome to everybody who is joining us via the live stream. If you have any questions, you can uh, leave them in the chat and uh, my colleagues will also pass them to us, uh, we will have a brief Q&A section in the end of the press conference. And without any further ado, I will pass the word to the Senator, please. Thank you very much. Berlin Science Week is a celebration of the intellectual exchange among scientists. With hundreds of participants from all over the world, this 10-day festival aims to make exciting research work accessible to all, to all those interested. As an international hub of innovation and a meeting place for a cosmopolitan community of scientists, Berlin is an ideal location to host this event. But what is it that makes this city so uniquely appealing to researchers? More than a hundred years ago, the art critic Karl Scheffler wrote about this rather ambivalent relationship with Berlin in a quote that still aptly describes the city he said about the German capital in 1910, Berlin is condemned to perpetually become and never to be. This continuous state of creation and transformation is what makes Berlin so attractive, both for people working in creative and scientific fields. Not only is this the key to the vibrancy of the city, but it is also a hallmark of outstanding science. Research is never truly finished. Science must deal with dead ends, numerous detours, surprising shortcuts. When the destination is finally in sight, it quite often is different than initially expected. Finding answers to scientific questions always brings forth a new set of questions which is turn want to be answered. Thus, science is itself in a perpetual process and becoming. But there are also very practical reasons for an international appeal of Berlin science. Four universities, six universities of applied science, three art colleges, private universities, and numerous research institutions mark Berlin as one of the most prominent locations of science in Europe. The high concentration of research facilities in the city promotes the exchange of their findings and an ongoing cooperation between them, making Berlin very attractive for scientists worldwide. The Berlin University Alliance is built on this close collaboration of Berlin's universities and looks to even further strength strengthen it by creating an integrated research space which also includes many non-university research facilities, such as the Max Planck, Leibniz, or Helmholtz Institute. The full range of cutting-edge research in Berlin was also evident in the great success of Berlin's institutions in the funding line for clusters of excellence, in the DFG excellence strategy, with seven clusters being approved in Berlin. No other German location was able to attract more from artificial intelligence to new materials and global challenges for the, for the model of liberal democracy and market economy to comprehensive approaches on urological and psychiatric, psychiatric disorders. <laughs> the range of topics that the partip participating scientists are researching is broad. 
The Berlin Science Week aims to bring this diverse research closer to the people in Berlin, who benefit in many ways from the excellent work of the numerous scientific institutions right at their doorstep. After all, the many social challenges of our time cannot be met without science. Science has a mandate to provide answers in the many societal questions, be it in the field of ecology and climate change, digitalization, artificial intelligence or healthcare. I'm sure that the scientists involved will also find new inspiration of their work through the exchange with the participants and fellow researchers. Therefore, the Senate Department for Higher Education and Research, Health and Long-Term Care is very happy to support the Berlin Science Week this year and in the future to fulfill its important mission. I would like to express my sincere thanks to the numerous organizers and participating scientists for making this exciting exchange possible. The effort required to hold such a huge event is considerable, but it I'm sure it has really been worth it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Ina Chibora, Senator for Higher Education and Research, Health and Long-Term Care of Berlin. And now the next word uh, is passed on to Jürgen Mlünek, Coordinator, Berlin Science Week Chairman of Falling Walls Foundation, please. Thank you. Hello, good morning to uh, everybody. I'm very glad that, uh, you know, we only have, uh, what, four more weeks to go before this year's uh, Berlin Science Week and uh, also the Falling Wall Science Summit starts. Let me uh, first say a few words of thanks because, you know, at the end, time is running and you always forget to thank those who made all this possible. So, uh, Senator, Chibora, thank you very much for the support of the city of Berlin. Uh, without that support, the Berlin Science Week could not take place. Thank you very much. Um, that's wonderful. Um, we have a great team um, that uh, you know takes care uh, of everything. I come back to also some numbers in a moment. And then, uh, Olena, thank you very much for having organized this press conference. And thank you, of course, for being here, hopefully asking questions later on. And I also say hello to our digital audience. We also have, uh, you know, this uh, Beilage, as we say in English, <laughs> uh, of the Tagesspiegel, which is just great. I hope someone from the Tagesspiegel is here. Wonderful. Thank you very much. I browse through it. Uh, I mean, it's in the newspapers this morning. I think it's great. I come back to it in a moment. Now, we live in difficult times. I come back to that too. Um, a couple of years ago, we had the pandemic and we couldn't meet, you know, person by person. Now, last year, for the first time again, this was possible. It's possible again this year. And this is just wonderful because science lives also from personal context. I just was on a similar conference as Falling Walls in Japan uh, a couple of days ago, the STS Forum. And, you know, talking also to the colleagues in the Asian Pacific area gives you a complete different feeling on what is happening in different part of the world than just looking at your screen. You really have to talk to the people, you have to meet them, and you have to make personal uh, contacts. And that's, I think, one of the key issues of the Berlin Science Week and also of, uh, of the Falling World Science Summit. As a matter of fact, I uh, have some numbers here. 9% this year are digital pure, in a certain sense, 15% hybrid, which means most of the over 150 events will be person by person. And this is great. I think Berlin, again, after the pandemic, with scientists and, you know, people that are interested in science research and innovation from all over the world. What are the challenges of the future besides, you know, all these geostrategic and political um, events that really preoccupy uh, us nearly daily now? 
it's um, the climate issue, it's the energy transformation, it's also demography, and all these topics will be covered during the Berlin Science Week. So it's on science, but it's also on humanities and social science, it's on architecture, it's on economy. We really cover during the Berlin Science Week the full spectrum with all our partners. And I'm very, very um, thankful also and grateful to our colleagues being here on stage. I mean, they are just a few examples of those who participate with a lot of creative ideas. I think you will come back also to I mean, this art and science uh, forum, which we can organize due to the support of, of the city of Berlin, which is some kind of new aspect also of the Berlin Science Week, bringing science and art together, which is also important because both is part of our culture and of our values. And I think this value aspect is also, is also really at, at the heart of what we are doing in, in science research and innovation. Anyhow, what are some um, highlights? Um, I could go through this little document in detail, but I won't do it. I just want to give a few examples. And uh, let me see. If, if you go through this Tagesspiegel Beilage, you see, I mean, nearly daily, there are, there are activities. For example, November 3 to 5, labor and Im immobility and mobility in Japan and East and Southeast Asia, transnational, regional, and rural urban perspectives. That's by the Vereinigung für Sozialwissenschaftliche Japan Forschung. This has some context to what I said at the beginning, but listen, next year, and the senator knows it, there will be the 30th anniversary of the partnership between the city of Berlin and the city of Tokyo. And I think we should celebrate this also next year in the context of the Berlin uh, Science Week and the Falling Wards event. Just one example. Um, we have again the campus, um, at the Museum für Naturkunde, the Museum of National History. And again, you see from November 2 to November, what is it, 4, we have a number of events at one site. This is also you know, part of the concept of the Berlin Science Week, having something distributed all over the city, but also some kind of your, you know, spot where you can go and where you are sure that you will meet people and uh, where there will be different um, activities. Finally, and then I end, uh, let me say a few words also on uh, the Fawning Wards conference, which at the end, you know, is I think one of the uh, highlights, November 7 to 9. And I come back to what I said you know, uh, at the very beginning. Last year, we had the Russian aggression against Ukraine. And those who were with us last year remember, you know, this picture that is also on the front cover of our annual report, uh, Stand with Ukraine. But, you know, November 9 is not only the day of the fall of the wall in Berlin, it's also for the Germans to remember the so-called Reichsprogromnacht. And this, you know, has a special... This has a special accent this year in view of what just happened in, in Israel. And be sure we will cover this aspect this year too at the Falling Walls uh, Conference. Uh, we cover a broad spectrum uh, of uh, topics. Just as an example, on November 9, we will have something on the three-dimensional um, picture of our Milky Way. This will be the starting presentation by Amina Helmi. Uh, later on, we hear something about the latest development in earthquake research. We wanted to cover this also this year in view of the earthquakes that happened. Uh, we will have something from South Africa on female uh, fear, 
um, intersections of gender and, and fear in the public space. We hear news about this laser-driven fusion from the Lawrence Livermore lab in uh, California that made a splash in view of breakthrough in laser fusion. We will hear about uh, this adipositas drug from Matthias Chöp, which will help to fight adipositas. We have someone from Google to talk about uh, recent developments in AI. Of course, AI will be one of the you know, topics that will, will be covered broadly, <laughs> chat GPT, but AI in a more general sense. We have uh, Anupa Kundo to talk about sustainable architecture and Ulrike Malmendier from Berkeley who will talk about uh, economic issues related to inflation. So a very broad spectrum and we are looking forward to all these science events which are public, which are in English, which are in German, which are by invitation only, which are long, which are short, and I think will cover all what you know you might want to hear during a couple of days about science research and uh, innovation at the global level. So that's it. Thank you so much, Jürgen Mlinek, coordinator of Berlin Science Week and chairman of the Falling Walls Foundation for giving an overview of one of the first highlights that we mentioned just now, Falling Walls Science Summit that will take place between the 7th and 9th of November. And then the word goes to the head of Berlin Science Week, Luisa Bengtsen, who will tell us a bit more about the news coming up this year and also a bit more about the program in general. Please, Luisa. Yes, hello. Uh, I'm super excited, a bit nervous. This is my first uh, Berlin Science Week so uh, in this function, so I'm really looking forward to it. And I hope everything goes according to plan. You can imagine there is a lot of work in the background, uh, but we are doing it. And the wonderful team, that's almost all of them are here. It's also new, most of them. Um, and without this wonderful, really engaged team and I would love to talk about each one of them in detail, but of course I don't have time to it, but really, thank you very much. I mean, I'm so blessed in a way, to say it in an American way. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Okay, but now to the Berlin Science Week. What's new? Um, a lot, actually. This Berlin Science Week will be different than the other ones. The same great Berlin Science Week as ever, but new in many different ways. So, first new thing, uh, we have now several physical locations when we concentrate the program. So, and that's just our traditional campus in the um, Museum of Natural History, which uh, you already mentioned. That's happening on the November 3rd and 4th. That's going to be amazing. Please come all there. Uh, we have all kinds of topics that I will talk about in a second. But the second location, and that's why we here, is the Holzmark 25. This is here, the whole area, thanks to our partners here, we are able, and thanks to the, to the Senate, the additional funding from the Senate, we are able to conduct this arts and science forum for the first time. Creative science, precise art is the motto for the arts and science forum happening here. And you can expect, uh, well, actually quite mind-blowing experiences. This is everything from tiny galleries to multi-sensory performances, experiences, but also workshops and talks and comedy. Um, really, pretty much everything is going to be happening here, and we're also going to be ending with a bang, so we're going to have for the first time ever a uh, Berlin Science Week concluding party, um, a science club night. So it's not just any party, it's going to be a science <laughs> party. So we're going to be talking about the science of rave in theory, but also then in practice. So uh, that's, the, that's the preview. And also there is uh, someone here who's going to present one of the highlights uh, at the forum in a moment. Um, so that's about the Arts and Science Forum. We are also now, for the first time ever, going to Poland. So we have program on the culture train, Kulturzug, which goes between Berlin and Wrocław um, every weekend, actually, since many years. Uh, and hopefully we'll continue to do so for many years. So we have a program on the train, because this train is an event train. And uh, we will also work with Polish uh, scientists 
to also deliver program here in Berlin from Poland. So that's, um, that's not a new aspect. Which brings me also to the overall uh, more international internationality of uh, Berlin Science Week. So Berlin Science Week is really, as um, both uh, Frau Chubara and uh, Jürgen mentioned, is about building bridges and about getting people to talk to each other. And this is more important than ever in our world. And it's not only more important than, uh, you know, because it's our gut feeling that it is important. It's really research has shown that uh, really to get people to really understand each other and work together, you really get have to get them in the same space and talk to each other. So this is exactly what Berlin Science is doing, and I think we have to go beyond just uh, you know just our regional reach. So uh, we have a lot of international guests at the Berlin Science Week. We have over 500 speakers, and many, many of them, I don't have exact numbers, but really at least every, almost every event has an international speaker involved. Um, we have contributions from almost 20 countries from around the globe, so from several countries in Africa, uh, from India, from Japan, from Italy, uh, we'll talk about it in a moment, uh, from US, from um, Mongolia, I mean really from pretty much really everywhere and notably also from Ukraine and from Israel. So we are really looking forward to this um, program items. Okay, um, and the topics, okay, maybe the topics. The topics are also important, right? So um, we have a lot of physics this year, which is, I think, capturing pretty well the zeitgeist. Uh, so if you're looking at the, look at the Nobel Prizes this year, it's a lot of, uh, well, quantum physics and photonics, and we have all that at the Berlin Science Week. So that's, uh, there's a lot of physics and also from different uh, takes. So it's not just talks about, you know, theoretical physics. It's really making physics accessible and experienceable for all. So that's happening. We have a lot of uh, talk about working in academia, working conditions in academia. So uh, we, are, we'll be, we will be exploring how, how does academia look like now and how should it be in order to be actually continuing to contribute to the, you know, to, to the good of all. Um, so there's a lot of that. We have topics from architecture. We'll be talking about the future of democracy and the future of economy. Uh, we'll be also talking about gender inequality in different aspects. A lot of AI, of course, uh, but not only uh, in let's say health sciences, but also for example in music creation. So creativity and AI, very important topic also for the creative industry. I cannot list all the topics here and I can just tell you that each one of the program items is a highlight. It's really all of them are extremely interesting and truly innovative and really uh, worthwhile visiting. And uh, as you already mentioned, there's this whole full program is in this magazine and it's also online. And because there are so many, it's 200 events happening at the Berlin Science Week. And there are so many of them, we'll be, create, uh, we'll be creating topic tracks. And this will be on the website shortly where we can group the, the topics and help you navigate the program. One special event I would like to mention uh, that's going to be happening at the Berlin Science Week. So uh, in order to explore this idea of talking to each other, meeting each other in person, and really um, forging peace through corporate scientific cooperation, we have two actually two events at the Berlin Science Week. One is um, at the Natural History Museum in the campus on the 4th of November, uh, where we have a, a panel discussion on on science diplomacy. We'll be exploring this topic in more detail. And the second one, which uh, we are very proud of and really um, happy that we we able to do this, uh, here at Holzmark 25 on the 5th of November, we will have a live painting of a body bear. So body bears, you know, this Berlin symbol of tolerance and peace. Um, so together with the body bear um, company, uh, body bear GmbH, <laughs> Buddy, Berlin, Buddy Bear Berlin is called officially, sorry. Um, so together uh, we are organizing a live painting event here and uh, we have asked several embassies in Berlin to contribute to, to this action. It's, it's gonna be an action, it's gonna be live here and um, the Ukrainian embassy is the recipient of this Buddy Bear. So um, several international um, scientists, hopefully uh, will contribute to this body bear and this will be then standing in front of the Ukrainian embassy um, in the future. So that's, um, I think that's 
it for me for now. Okay. Yeah. And I'm very happy to ask any uh, to answer any specific questions you might have. Thank you so much, Luisa. Thank you. So Luisa already mentioned the news for this year, Art and Science Forum and Holzmark 25 from the 1st to the 10th of November, uh, where we will focus on the synergy of arts and science. Yeah, so a little bit more about that also to follow soon. And now the next speaker is Pier Giorgio Alotto, scientific attaché of the Embassy of Italy in Berlin. Please. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, well, I'm also very excited because it's not uh, only my first presence here at the Berlin Science Week, but also my first press conference. So <laughs> two reasons for being excited. Um, having said that, um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to be here today. And I'm the fourth in the row, so things get easier and easier the, the more you go on because so much has been said. So I will try not to repeat myself too much with things you have uh, already heard. But anyhow, I would like to stress before I, I really tell you what we do in the context of the Berlin Science Week, what I think is, is important for an embassy. So embassy have the mission of promoting cooperation, collaboration and understanding. So really finding the opportunity of being present at the Berlin Science Week is really fits very well within the mission of what we do. And actually, as I will tell you, we are also very happy that we can open up the embassy to the general public because embassies should not be ivory towers that are close to the public, but they should also be a place where the public can enter and, and experience things. So we are very glad that one of the two events we are organizing will be inside our embassy. The other one will be at the campus. So two very good opportunities for us to uh, share with the public two uh, aspects of international cooperation research. And as was said, um, a lot of physics. The things we do are physics and engineering, I would say. Uh, two very different things which I'll, I'll be talking about. And as was mentioned, there are problems that really need an international effort to be solved. We've learned it in, uh, in the occasion of the pandemic. We have learned it when the unfortunate war events uh, took place, all of a sudden the energy uh, spectrum changed. Everybody was very scared of not having access to energy. So we see that uh, problems very, very quickly spread across borders and must be faced at the global level, not at the level of the single country. Problems don't look at physical boundaries, they don't look at geographic boundaries, they just spread. And the solution to, to these problems must be tackled on a global scale. So. I'm very happy, um, I'm, I'm, I can't say a scientist, I'm an engineer by trade, but I'm, anyway, I'm not, not a diplomat. Good enough. good enough, that's good enough. <laughs> a second best approximation to being a scientist. <laughs> and so I, I consider myself very, very fortunate because science uh, has the ability of looking over some problems, even when there was a strong division between the East and the West, the scientists were cooperating. Uh, this is a, a, a very important lesson, that scientists find a way of cooperating even in the most dramatic circumstances. So this, I think, is, fits very well within the, the context of the Falling Walls mission. Having said that, uh, the two things we are, we are uh, presenting this year are two examples of such international fruitful scientific cooperation, which allows to uh, invest the limited resources that mankind has to devote to science in a very efficient way. So cooperation is a key to efficiently invest the money that, that we have to do research. The first thing uh, we will be presenting will be at the museum on, um, on October the 3rd. It's an event on a nuclear fusion for decarbonization. We all know humankind needs energy. Energy is needed not only to, you know, for the light bulbs, but energy is needed for everything, also to produce clean water, for example. So energy is really a key enabling thing that humanity needs. We all know that the production of energy has very strong impacts on climate. The uh, solution of climatic challenges is certainly a very, very urgent problem for mankind. Nuclear fusion looks at being a long-term solution to this challenge. Nuclear fusion is the mechanism that powers the stars. Now, uh, 
nature sometimes loves simplicity. So it invented a way of producing energy with a very, very simple reaction. Uh, unfortunately, in stars, this reaction is easy because they are so huge and there is a lot of you know, heat and, and pressure that allows this thing to happen. On Earth, it's much, much more challenging. So right now, I think the, um, the physics is more or less well understood, but the engineering is still a major hurdle. So we are bringing together some of the leading uh, experts in science, not the um, uh, laser confinement that was mentioned, but magnetic confinement. We will bring together experts from Italy, from Germany, from Japan, from the United States, and for ITER, which is the largest uh, worldwide project on magnetic confinement fusion together to uh, democratize this, uh, this very interesting and very challenging topic. As I said, at the museum, open to, to the public, there won't be, apart from maybe a few invited guests, all the seats will be reserved to the public to explore, um, to explore this topic. It will be about 50 minutes of presentation and then a lot of time for discussion and, and for questions by the public, which we find very important. So. Uh, the, the scientists should not just teach as it was a, a university lecture, but they should interact with the public and explain why such things, although uh, expensive and complicated, really need to be addressed through international cooperation. The second topic, again, is physics, but a totally different thing. So fusion is for an immediate problem that mankind has to solve, which is producing clean energy. The other topic we will be presenting is uh, gravitational waves. So a very fundamental thing. Gravitational waves is uh, a known phenomenon. It has been awarded a Nobel Prize in uh, 2017, so it is a known fact. Um, but we want to push it further. And, um, and to push it further, we need very, very large telescopes. Now, it's not a telescope as you would imagine, something that captures light tiny, tiny signals of light coming from very uh, distant galaxies. But uh, this telescope will need to detect faint signals in the distortion of, as they say, space-time. Okay? Big sounding word, but actually they will um, deflect laser beams. Okay? That's, that's, uh, that's what it boils down to. The physicists uh, will excuse me. <laughs> um, okay. Um, Anyhow, but to, do, to, to build such a thing, you need uh, a very, very quiet environment, and not quite in the sense of music and raves, but in the sense of geological stability, so your mirrors should not vibrate. And there aren't that many places in the world where you can host such a huge facility. So you need uh, uh, holes or tunnels that extend for tens of kilometers to be able to detect such faint signals. And there aren't many places, as I said, on Earth where you can do such experiments. Fortunately or unfortunately uh, for Europe, in Europe there are at least two such places to build such a huge telescope. And to build it, we need a very, very broad international cooperation, which certainly uh, will include Germany, it will include Italy, it will include the Netherlands and many other uh, contributors, Poland, uh, Spain. Many, many scientists will have to work together. We are talking about probably s somewhere in, in the neighborhood of 10,000 scientists working on the same site. So it's a huge collaboration project that is uh, going to be called Einstein Telescope. Einstein did a lot of work on gravity and not only you know, on, on uh, light. And, and so um, the target of this event is to popularize this uh, gravitational wave research, make it accessible, much better than, than I did right now, and also to present uh, the um, proposal that Italy has to do for hosting the telescope physically in Sardinia. Um, so, concluding words, we would like the public who will be attending these events to walk away not only with a little more, bit more knowledge on specific topics, but above all, to get a feeling for how much scientific cooperation across boundaries is relevant. And I think this is, I guess, what, what the Falling Walls Foundation wants to, to, have to promote as a message. 
we are very, very glad to have this opportunity. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pier Giorgio Allotto, Scientific Attaché of Embassy of Italy in Berlin. The embassy, we're very happy to have the embassy uh, again on the program, and the embassy is presenting two Science Week events uh, in November. And moving forward, Martin Wenner, Chairman, Einstein Foundation, Berlin. Thank you very much. Physics was just mentioned, and he looked at me. I'm not a physicist. <laughs> <laughs> I think he is. I am. He is. Um, but Einstein also was mentioned as a chairperson of the Einstein Foundation here in Berlin, a state-funded foundation here in Berlin to promote excellence in uh, science and in research in this town. And as a part of a very vibrant week coming up, 10 days actually, I believe, um, I think it is very important, as has been said before, before I go into what we are doing to reflect on some things which were already said. The first of, of them is, of course, the situation uh, in the world. And I'm not only speaking about Israel, I'm speaking about the Ukraine, I'm speaking about the problems which arise from not being able to cooperate. You have just made a very good case for the necessity of cooperation. We have, and Jürgen Glenick did that the same just before, uh, concerning the Oceania, Japan, other places. It was mentioned that East and West used uh, used to, in a certain sense, uh, be in contact on the scientific level all over these many decades. As a matter of fact, this time in which we live now has its uh, unique challenges. The geopolitical situation has changed in a way which makes me personally and many of our colleagues wonder whether this kind of cooperation in a time in which we need this cooperation more than ever before, as a matter of fact, climate change is just one global challenge which we face, um, whether we can continue, whether we will continue looking at what is happening between China and the United States. Now, um, I don't want to go into this too long because we don't have the time, but the fact is that in the Falling Walls Conference and in the Science Week, we will be dealing with a necessity not only of cooperation, but the absolute, the un uh, it's unambiguous, we have to go that way because if we don't, humanity will face challenges which we cannot maybe master. Uh, looking at that, um, looking at Einstein also, who was a physicist, as I said before, and as also a person who is concerned with keeping peace in the world, um, we are deeply, deeply concerned about our colleagues, not only in Ukraine, also in Israel, of course, not only the colleagues, but the person, the, everybody concerning uh, who's in that situation at this moment. We have been uh, cooperating, because I was speaking about cooperation, of, as Einstein, the name goes back to a person who also founded a university in Jerusalem. We have been cooperating, our partner is Jerusalem, Jerusalem Hebrew University, and we have to extend our deep regret on what is happening there as we have done last year and this year again, uh, colleagues in Kiev and other places in the Ukraine. I'll go into that just a bit more, just in order to go into the topic, because the first thing I want to mention, we have a lot of uh, events coming up, as, you say, as I heard, 200, I didn't count them actually, is um, of a very interesting, has an interesting title, Does Diversity Help or Hinder Research? Uh, the impact on di of diversity on research quality is the name of, a, of, a, uh, of a one of our events uh, in the Natural History Museum, by the way, which it was also mentioned before. Um, and that explores something which we know from other th uh, themes and other topics, actually. We know that biodiversity is eminently uh, important for our further existence. But does that the same, doesn't the same thing apply to the re research ecosystem. Don't we need all kinds of people from all different places in this world in order to further knowledge and further the possibility of research and the capability of our minds? That is something which we'll go into, and I think that is a very th important thing. It's also hybrid, by the way, hybrid and, and present. You can come to the National History Museum, but you also can take part if you don't um, uh, manage to come there. But I think that is one of the big questions which we face. 
and I think that we all face the similar questions in many other uh, topics uh, concerning not natural history or the science, uh, natural sciences, but also in other, in other questions like culture, of course. Another thing I want to mention, in order not to make this too long, is um, something which also concerns all of us, the question of research quality. Um, for three years now, for the third time now, actually we, the Einstein Foundation Berlin has been uh, together with the Damp Stiftung and with the State of Berlin and with Nature and PLOS and many other partners, which we are profoundly thankful for, um, and the Max Planck Institutes, by the way, also. We have been bestowing a prize for research quality. The name is Einstein, uh, Einstein, uh, Einstein Foundation Award for Promoting Quality in Research. And that goes in three categories. The first is a personal, the second is an institutional, but there's a third one bestowing 100,000 euros, by the way, which is quite a lot of money, for early researchers. And during these uh, science week, there will be um, uh, the choice of the uh, prize winning uh, team this year. And that choice will happen on uh, November 9th. Um, it is uh, something which you can take uh, in because it is a virtual thing and it will be via live stream. You can go into that and you can look at the f 160 participants actually um, applied. Only five, I believe, five have been, or six actually have been chosen to participate on that event. I think it will be fascinating. We have career uh, early career teams from all over the world, which is another thing which I'm very proud of. Um, the third thing I want to mention is, is something totally different, but that also is uh, fascinating, I believe. That is Einstein in the Dome. We have been uh, cooperating with the Zeiss Planetarium for a long time now, actually years. And on November 1st, um, so you have to uh, go into the program and you'll find it there, Einstein in the Dome in the Zeiss Planetarium in Berlin um, will uh, go into neurotechnology. Uh, with Professor Suryu Sudhikara, who is an Einstein professor for clinical neurotechnology at the Charité. Um, you will be able to see in a 3D uh, situation, I've seen it actually, I think it's absolutely fascinating, uh, a travel, you travel into the brain. And the, uh, the title of the event will be Who is Controlling Whom? It is a journey to the interface of brain, artificial intelligence, and robotics. Um, it is a one-hour event, uh, I think 6.30 p.m. it says here, so in other words, uh, it is 6.30 p.m. Um, I think it really makes sense to go there, yeah? um, and you will find something which you cannot find any other place, because of course you know that projecting in a planetarium, I don't know how many of you have gone into the planetariums in the last couple of years, it's 36 projectors, as I believe, and the whole room is filled with things which you can travel into. Now I um, will finish here, but I will repeat once more that I believe in this vibrant city, in this vibrant event, we are very proud to participate. We are thankful to all our partners and we have a lot of very good partners here, um, as we have seen and I'm very um, excited to be part of this. But we all are part of a global community and this global community has to stand together in order to see that science, as far as that is possible, together with other things, with political politicians, with culture, with many other things, that we managed to help the world go into a better way than it is in the present. Thank you very much, Martin Renner, Chairman Einstein Foundation Berlin. And our last speaker is Roman Engelt-Herbert, Director, Paul Drude Institute for Solid, Solid State Electronics. Please. Thank you very much, and thank you for the opportunity uh, to represent uh, the Paul Drude Institute here as one of the participants of the Berlin Science Week. The Paul Drude Institute is in the center of Berlin. It's a Leibniz Institute and it's also part of the Forschungsverbund Berlin. And just from this you can see uh, how important science is uh, to Berlin as one of the metropolitan areas and vibrant cities um, where we are doing research. And um, we are not only doing research, but we are also doing a lot of outreach. Sometimes we open the doors to our institutes the Berlin Science Week for us is uh, particularly important uh, because it allows us uh, to embark on an action with the public and with the society 
And what PDI has done over the years, uh, over and over again within this framework of the Berlin Science Week, is uh, to reach the unreachable, the audience that typically doesn't come when we have open doors, um, and then try to enact with them. One of the ways we are doing this, we are actually located at the Gendarmen Market in, in Berlin, is that since you can't look through the walls, um, we allow you to have a look at what we are doing in the lab by projecting on our facade what it is that we're actually doing in order to do science. Um, we are also reaching out to folks, for example, in subways, uh, where you are more focused on minding the gap when you are exiting the subway. Uh, we believe that you should also mind the labs. So we had um, an exhibit where, you know, while you're switching from subway to subway, you could actually also have a look at what it is that folks, scientists, engineers um, do in their lab. And so this year, uh, uh, we are very um, excited about the opportunity that uh, we have with the Berlin Science Week to make um, science relatable uh, without hiding the complexity that it has. And you know, the, the Paul Drude Institute is working at the nexus of physics, so I'm a physicist by training, but we're also working in the synthesis of materials, we do material science, um, and we're also doing devices, so we do a whole lot of things. We're not just physicists, we are uh, much more than that. Um, and so what we want to do this year is we want to talk about phase transitions. Um, phase transitions like physicists see this, but we want to go much more beyond this because we believe that if I say phase transitions, everybody in the audience thinks about a particular thing. You know, if you're a physicist, you're thinking about the state of matter. Um, but if you do psychology or if you do uh, social sciences, you might think about very different types of transitions of states. Um, and so um, this is one of the things that we are trying to do, trying to bring this uh, complementing expertise together in one room, um, pushing ourselves um, outside our comfort zone. This is what scientists are trained to do. Otherwise, we can't gain new knowledge. Um, and we want to invite everyone to be part of this. Uh, and talk about uh, what phase transitions really are. In particular, because uh, many of uh, the speakers before were talking about this, uh, phase transition in science, uh, a phase transition in, uh, in, in the society, we might be already just experiencing one. Uh, we're coming from a fairly uh, stable state. Uh, the world order seems to change. It's a lot about order and disorder. Disorder happens when you have phase transitions. You go from one ordered state to another ordered state. Physicists look at this very different than uh, folks in social sciences. So this is one of these events where we can, we can bring all of these complementing perspectives and expertise together. Um, and it's very exciting to say that this is going to happen November 9th. Uh, this is where we had transitions, particularly in Germany, uh, going from one political order to another political order. And we're very excited to welcome everyone and to have a discussion with us about this. Thank you very much. Um, so we are through with the presentations and then I'm just going to ask in the audience if we have any questions. I also don't think we have any questions online. All right. So yeah, I will take that as a compliment uh, that we were really comprehensive with our presentations. And uh, just a quick thank you to our panelists for being here, for sharing the highlights with us for um, hyping us up for the new Berlin Science Week that is coming in a couple of weeks. And yeah, visit our webpage, uh, berlinscienceweek.com, check out our program, come visit us at the campus and Museum for Natural History on the 3rd and the 4th of November. Visit us at the new spot that we are celebrating this year. It's the Art and Science Forum at Holzmarkt 25. And see you in November. Thank you.